What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. As yesterday, the New York Giants had their second inter-squad scrimmage, which we'll get to see today, pre-recorded, even though, but it's still football, and we get to see the New York Giants in action on NBC today. I'll be live streaming that, but we're going to go over some of the highlights and the lowlights from yesterday's scrimmage, according to several people that were there. Um, and, of course, Daniel Jones stood out. But before I even get started on any of this, um, the first thing I want to say is this. When you're scrimmaging against one another, whether it's in a scrimmage or whether it's in practice, um, it's kind of very hard to evaluate individuals. One, because these guys play against each other each and every day. They're familiar with the offense or the defense that they're going up against. And they know that the players that they're going up against tendencies. Think about it. These guys play against each other each and every day for the last three weeks in practice or however long they've been doing it. Lorenzo Carter knows the tendencies of Andrew Thomas. He knows the tendencies of Cam Fleming and the guys that he was able to beat yesterday. And the same thing for the defense against Daniel Jones. Of course, with the fumbling, that's a problem. And we'll get into that. But that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. They're very familiar with playing against one another. And of course, when somebody does great, that means somebody does bad. So it's kind of hard to say to, to get excited because, yeah, Carter blew it up yesterday. And I'm happy to hear that more so than anybody else because I've been singing his praises. But that means that Cam Fleming and Andrew Thomas didn't do a good job. He had four sacks yesterday. Fleming surrendered one. Thomas surrendered one. Toyolo surrendered one. And I, I don't think I was able to find out who surrendered the other. And maybe we'll see it today. But Toyolo is discouraging as well because that's a guy we brought in specifically to be a blocker. And I actually read an article on Levine a couple of days ago that said he was firmly on the bubble. So maybe he doesn't even make this team. We'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. But Lorenzo Carter, we'll start there. We'll start with the positive, And there was a couple of more that we'll get into. Great stuff from everything that you heard. Lorenzo Carter's been a guy that I have said that I feel a lot of New York Giants fans have jumped ship. I think he's going to come out. He's going to have a very strong year this year for the New York Giants. Now, one thing that I questioned about him was how the New York Giants were going to use him because he's a very versatile piece in a defense that you think is going to be very versatile. He's very athletic, but he's a guy that has, you know, kind of struggled in the sack department. He's had four sacks each of the first two years in the NFL. Based off of yesterday, I would think Lorenzo Carter is going to be one of the premier pass rushers for this team this year, and I would think that's the role that he'll be used in. But we'll have to wait and see what the New York Giants do. It could be different based on it each week. But like I said, the guy had four sacks yesterday, and he had a strip sack, which is great for him, bad for Daniel Jones, but we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, Lorenzo Carter's a guy who I think fits the scheme beautifully. I think the coaching staff is going to coach him up. He's a guy with a lot of talent. We've known that for quite some time. We're kind of waiting for him to break out, and this may finally be the year for Lorenzo Carter. The other positives, we'll get into Wayne Gallman. Also, Graham Gano. Gotta love hearing that. Graham Gano, of course, uh, replacing Aldrick Rosas, who was arrested for the uh, DUI, and he's since been kicked off the, off the team. Gano was perfect. Uh, yesterday in the scrimmage. He's been perfect really throughout camp from everything you've heard, which is great. Gano was a former Pro Bowler just three years ago. Maybe he comes back this year to that Pro Bowl form in which he only missed one field goal kick. The following year, he was 14 for 16, including a 63-yard make against the Giants before he went down. He hit the uh, the uh, scrimmage winner yesterday along with being perfect. So that was great to hear about Graham Gano. His field goal kicking is going to be very important for the New York Giants. We all know last year, Rosas blew at least one, if not two games for this football team. So I thought that was encouraging. The other good piece of news, Wayne Gallman. Also, I saw a catch, a couple catches by Darius Slayton. He made a nice catch over the middle in traffic uh, with a slant. Wanted to point that out. But Wayne Gallman, who's firmly on the bubble, along with Javon Leak, they're kind of competing against one another if they go with four running backs, had a great day. Javon Leak had a good day as well, according to several, but Gallman really stood out. I think he had two touchdowns, uh, receiving and a rushing. The rushing touchdown was 43 yards, which is great. You'll love to hear it, but the thing you got to ask yourself is, is that bad for the defense? Did they just surrender a 43-yard touchdown to uh, a guy that, you know, could barely crack the NFL roster this year? So it's great to hear about Gallman as he tries to compete to make this roster, but not so good to hear about the defense. But regardless, good things there from those players as they look to compete to make the team. Looks like Gallman stands a good chance to make this roster with his experience and the fact that he's performing pretty well in camp and the scrimmages, as from what I've heard outside of just yesterday. So, Wayne Gallman, expect him to be, if not the backup, maybe the second backup for the New York Giants. So good stuff there. And that's really it in terms of the positive. There was definitely a lot of negative. And you know that the media is going to highlight it, as they should. Fumbling has been a major problem for Daniel Jones dating back to last year. And it's the thing that I'm focused on more so than anything else 
this entire year. I'm not going into this year with playoff expectations, but I am going into this year with expectations with Daniel Jones, who has worked his tail off, getting in good shape. You, you know, you saw him working out with the, his former coaches, working specifically to improve those fumbling problems. That needs to improve this year, and if it doesn't, you have to seriously question whether or not Daniel Jones is our quarterback going forward. Now, I'm still going into the year optimistically. I'm not going to let one scrimmage where Daniel Jones put the, the ball on the ground one time in which he was hit as many times as he was. I'm not going to let that, you know, dampen my spirits going into the regular season. But Daniel Jones absolutely needs to work on that. I say it all the time. The guy fumbled 18 times last year. The fifth most times in the history of football in just 12 games. If he doesn't improve that year two, you got to start to have serious doubts about Jones. Now, I definitely think he still could. I'm thinking he probably still will, but that needs to be harped on, and you know that the media is going to jump all over him for it as he put the ball on the ground yesterday, and I saw the picture there. Got to do better. Got to do better with the pocket awareness, and of course, the offensive line needs to do a lot better. The offensive line we spent a lot of capital on in the draft and a lot of resources. Now, the one thing I'll say, I'm going to go into this year patient. Now, with the fumbling problems for Daniel Jones, I expect that to be an improved day one. But in terms of Daniel Jones' production and the offensive line's production, I'm going to go into the regular season patient for the first three or four weeks. If I'm being completely fair and unbiased, if you're a Giants fan, you can't expect a finished product from a young offensive line. I mean, for God's sakes, we've heard that they're thinking about starting two rookie tackles, and we're going against some of the best pass rushers the league has to offer the first four or five weeks. So I'm going in with moderate expectations early on. I think the New York Giants are going to have to commit to that run early and often. But it's not good things. You, you, you heard that Andrew Thomas got beat. You heard that Camp Fleming got beat, and maybe that opens up the door for Matt Parrott. We'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. But it's an inexperienced offensive line. I don't expect the finished product day one. And I know Giants fans are going to jump all over Thomas if he struggles the first week. It's way too early for a rookie le left tackle. You have to give him some time to develop, especially in a shortened preseason. Hopefully he comes out great, but expect him to come out with, you know, mixed results. That would be my take on not just Thomas, but the entire offensive line. I do expect this offensive line to get better over the course of the season, but of course you don't like hearing the pressure that they surrendered. I suppose some of the good things, well, it sounds like they run the ball pretty well. Gallman had a good day. Saquon Barkley, by all accounts, had a really good day. And I think if they're going to win games early on, that's what they're going to have to do. I don't want to see Daniel Jones dropping back 50 times to throw passes. It's not going to work that way. Not with this team, not with our defense, and not with our inexperienced offensive line and inexperienced quarterback. Let's not forget Daniel Jones is learning a completely new offense in an offseason that was cut short. So we need to focus on the, on, the, on the run game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But like I said, don't get too down from this. I mean, the fumbling, I completely get you guys getting upset about. But in terms of the offensive line surrendering sacks to Carter, these guys play against each other each and every day. Um, but you could say, well, Thomas should know how Carter plays, and that's fair to point out. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. You know, it's a scrimmage. I'm not going to get too down, and I'm also going to go going to go into this year with realis realistic expectations. Either way, I'm excited for football to start. We're just two weeks out. The New York Giants will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll get to watch the scrimmage today. Really excited about that. Hopefully some of you guys come on by for that. But yeah, Jones needs to work on the fumbling. I mean, that's the moral of the story yesterday. The other thing I wanted to point out was Joe Judge actually challenged the play from what I read, which was... Interesting. He is doing everything he can to prepare himself for both him individually and the team for week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers as they simulated a challenge in which Joe Judge lost. But I thought that was interesting to hear too. This guy crosses all his T's, dots all his I's as he gets prepared. But yeah, Jones got to work on those fumbling problems. No doubt about it. And the offensive line is going to have to get a lot better. But expect it to take a little bit of time, similar to the 2018 season, where you really saw that offensive line start to take shape over the second half of the season. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.